And our kids are going to say to us, well, what were you doing back when we could have changed course? And what are we going to say? Well, there was a cool video game called Angry Birds. Played a, played a lot of that. There was a cooking show, I think. You know, and then, and the other thing that Occupy has really shown us, and, 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 and what the occupation that you guys did here is, is that we love free speech in this country. It's incredibly important to us, and we have it until we don't. We have it until it's on a sidewalk someone doesn't like, or it's near a building someone doesn't want you to be near, or it's, or it's near a building with, with guys in suit pants and women in pantsuits. Then, not so much, you know. I think I remember this. I think it was a Dr. Seuss book, wasn't it? You cannot have it in the park, you cannot have it after dark, you cannot have it with some geese, you cannot have it according to the police. If you want a freedom of speech, be damned, Uncle Sam, I am. Remember that one? I mean, they're arresting, they're arresting people in Occupy Wall Street for using bullhorns or writing in chalk on the sidewalk. You know, they're, they're arresting people, and they say, well, it disrupts the social order. It disrupts the social, you know, it disrupts the social order, foreclosing on millions of homes. Sucking, sucking money out of infrastructure to, 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 to put in the wallets of your friends, you know, that... That's what disrupts the, 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 the social order. We've got, we've got flood levees collapsing and bridge, bridge buttresses falling over. People are floating by on old mattresses. But you think chalk messages is what's going <laughs> to fuck shit up? Yeah? You think that's really going to disrupt the social order? Like people are going to see chalk and they're going to be like, Oh, chalk! Run! Who has the antidote for the chalk? <laughs> some of these bankers finally arrested, if we had a chant that was good enough that they accidentally joined in, you know, maybe then we could finally arrest them. If it was something they really liked, you know, like, go ahead and call us twats, we have credit default swaps. You know, then, maybe we could finally arrest them. Maybe finally. And look, I understand that a lot of these police officers get it, and a lot of them are doing their job, but there's got to be a little voice in the back of their head that's like, hey, maybe I should be uh, arresting the bankers and the economic rapers rather than beating up this 19-year-old girl with a henna tattoo because she's trying to save the world with arts and crafts. You know, I, I, there's got to be a little voice in the back of their head that's like, wow, I just pawned my grandma's wedding ring so we could afford daycare, so my wife could get a second job, so we could afford the Alzheimer medicine for my father. And maybe I shouldn't be, uh, you know, pepper spraying the, 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 the little kid with, who's trying to save the world by drawing less money for smart bombs and more money for smart kids. Maybe that's not the answer. We, we, we saw the media's technique, and you know, uh, uh, the, one of their techniques was to call us dirty. And one of the earliest reports, finally, it took about a week before the New York Times would even cover Occupy Wall Street. And one of the first reports they did was a half page thing about how Occupy Wall Street was doing harm to area restrooms. <laughs> so you care more about the harm done to area restrooms than the harm done to the American people by corporations and Wall Street titans who make Charlie Sheen's moral compass look like that of Harriet Tubman. Really? Really? Really, the corporate elite are shitting all over this world, and I don't think you're writing about that. You know, that's what needs cleaning up. They, they said that, that mothers, they said that mothers had trouble getting their strollers around police barricades. Well, God forbid that the revolution should get in the way of your evening stroll with little trust fund. You know? <laughs> And this is a revolution. It may not be a traditional revolution, but it's a revolution in thought. People are tired of greed over good, of profitable pollution over people, of war for wealth over the welfare of citizens. 
You know, people are tired of that shit, and the, and, and the revolution will not be tidy. It won't be sanitized. It'll be criticized, misunderstood, misconstrued, but it'll push through. All right, because it's not going to be dissuaded by police barricades, ankle sprains, driving rain, or pepper spray. Pepper spraying us is like throwing water on gremlins. The more you do it, the more yeah. of us fucking show up. <laughs> Thought revolution, and the revolution might not fit with your Pilates schedule. You know? It's not gonna wait until after your hair appointment, your dinner party, Tommy Tucker titty tilt, alright? The revolution will not be televised, as Gil Scott Heron told us, but it will be digitized and posted on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and anywhere media ideas are told. You might have to scroll through a couple of requests for Farmville, but it'll be in there. It'll be in there. You know, this is, this is a thought revolution, and it doesn't care about your intellectual lack of curiosity, all right? Lack of intellectual curiosity. It's not going to fit easily into a mainstream media-defined paradigm, you know? And the, and the revolution would, however, like to apologize for shitting all over your apathy. Now, pick a side. <laughs> I want to open an adult video store in Nebraska called Porn on the Cob. <laughs> Some of you didn't laugh, but you were like, that's a good idea. <laughs> and, we're, and, and that's the other thing, besides showing America that, that we don't really have free speech when, when they don't want us to, it's also showing America just how shitty our media really is. Because people knew this was going on, whether they were covering it or not. They covered it eventually, because they were like, everybody's talking about it, and we haven't fucking mentioned it. You know, people have figured out there's something going on here. And, and, and our media is just terrible. One thing, we, we need a lot of things in our media. One thing we need is we need uglier reporters, right? You don't see them much, because it's actors now. But every once in a while, you turn on CNN, you're like, ugh, that guy worked for his job, right? He knows his stuff. He fought his way to the top. That's, that's why the BBC is so reliable. Really, that group of mongoloid walruses they have on there, journalistic geniuses. I don't know what it is. Something about a couple of teeth in your forehead makes you brilliant. Well, what do we get? We get this, you know, squad of dickheads and bright-eyed bimbos who miss, who, who missed the cut on the American Idol audition. So now they're reading the result of the G8 summit to the entire country, even though they clearly think G8's a vitamin. That's what we get. That's what we get. You know, it's all it's all celebrity bullshit. Who had a baby? Who went into rehab? Whose baby went into rehab? That's all it is. It's all ratings, and, and the, the other thing I think we need to have a more informed uh, populace is we need to take the, the crappy shows that we're all watching anyway, you know, that we all watch, and the stupid cooking shows, and the Hitler shows, and, uh, you know, Dancing with the Idiots, and all that stuff, and you take that, and instead of subliminal marketing, put subliminal truth underneath, so you wouldn't even know you're learning something, you know? Just watching robot cupcake wars like you do every Thursday, and underneath would be, hey, kids make your clothing, or you know, your governor's destroying your health care, or you know, why'd you ever give up drawing when you were younger? You really enjoyed it, and you were quite good, and you gave that up to what? File paperwork 12 hours a day? Why? So you can afford some marble countertop island in your kitchen? You don't even use a thing! You don't even use a fucking countertop! I could understand that life choice if you were humping that countertop every day and twice on Sunday. Then that would make sense. You know, just subtle messages we could slip in. <laughs> they always say if you catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. I think the stop part of those instructions is unnecessary. <laughs> oh no, I'm on fire. But these cupcakes aren't going to ice themselves. <laughs> so now we've got our uh, 
our lovely tea party. They're fun to watch, right? There's nothing, there's nothing more fun to watch than a politician standing in front of thousands of people and being like, if elected, I will make sure you don't have health care. And they're like, yay! That the other guy can't promise me that. I mean, I'm amazed at what some of these groups of people would be able to believe. Now, there's certain people that, that still believe Saddam Hussein caused 9-11 and President Obama is actually a Kenyan and President Bush was actually elected. You know, it's just... It's just amazing. And, 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 and you know, and, and the stuff they're, they're, they're still supporting. I mean, why are we still in Afghanistan? Let's bring our, our kids home. It's, both sides of the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> Literally, we're paying the Taliban millions to let our trucks through so that we can fight the Taliban. We're losing a game of solitaire. <laughs> we're playing a game of Twister alone. That's what this is. No wonder a scrappy group of insurgents in torn clothes and flip-flops are able to compete with the most powerful military in the world. They have us on their side. <laughs> That's how they're doing it. And, and, and not standing up for the environment, which still, and all this is all connected, you know, because the corporations are making the decisions, they're making the decisions of your governor, and, they, and, and those decisions do not include a damn thought about the environment. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It, 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 like, it came out that, uh, so in 2004, Congress passed the Clean Water Act to keep our water clean. Then it came out, like, last year that it's been violated 500,000 times by corporations and factories, and 3% have been prosecuted. So we know who they are. We know who's dumping carcinogens in our water. And what do we do when a friend or family member gets cancer? You run the 5K, you wear the pink ribbons, and I'm not going to take that away. But well, let's run the 5K to the factory where they're dumping the shit in the water. Take, take all the pink ribbons, use those to tie up the CEO. Then take all the change we made at the Breast Cancer Awareness Bake Sale, put it in the end of a tube, sock and beat the shit out of the guy. Right? Nothing excessive. Each of the 10,000 participants would get one swing of the sock. Just one swing. I think we need to think about this stuff. You know, it's amazing that, like, the news will tell us how close global warming is, and, and people, a lot of us don't change. You know, like, ten years ago, they were like, it's a hundred years away, and everyone's like, well, I personally will be dead by then. <laughs> then they were like, we're wrong, it's twenty years away, and everyone's like, well, we'll invent giant air conditioners by then. Now they're like, people in California are on fire! And everyone's like, they probably live in a really fiery area. They're probably storing dry stuff in their homes, like old magazines and elderly people. You know, don't, don't come knocking on my door every time some little shit goes down. Oh, Indonesia's underwater. Well, tell them to get up and move to Indonesia. Really? Just because their little country goes underwater. I gotta stop using plastic bags. And, and, and while we're on the topic, we have to watch every polar bear drift out to sea on a damn ice cube. They're dumb animals. Move south, you idiots. They, they can't figure out a game plan. The geese figured out. Follow the geese, Magellan. Jesus, you could be in Hawaii right now eating beautiful women with coconuts on their chests. That's a well-rounded meal. That's meat and fruit on the same plates. Hey guys, I gotta get out of here in a second, but uh, I have a, a, a full hour uh, stand-up comedy CD on your way out. I'm donating a third of all the proceeds to uh, to, to recall Scott Walker effort. And, uh, and thanks for